in this video today, we're gonna talk about how to make your motorcycle fast, step by step. All right guys, today we're gonna to talk about how to make your motorcycle fast. The first thing that I would say is go full bolt on. Like with cars, you normally hear people talking about full bolt on. Uh, basically which incorporates on a car which would be a throttle body an intake and an exhaust on a sports bike for instance it would be exhaust air filter velocity stacks and a dyno tune um, this is probably the first and most crucial step to making your bike fast because it's not tearing apart the motor and it's not adding any power adders. Next, I would say lowering and stretching your bike is a must. An extended swing arm coupled with lowering links. Personally, on both of my bikes, um, on the Gixxer 1000, it's a 13 inch stretch evil swing arm. On the ZX-12, it's a 12 inch stretch on a Fish's chrome swing arm. Also, along with the suspension, you can also flash your ECU to take out the factory restrictions. I'd also recommend a piggyback such as a Power Commander. I personally use Power Commanders on both of my bikes. My Gixxer 1000 came with the Power Commander. Uh, Power Commander 3 USB, which is the older version. The Power Commander 5 is the newest and current model of the Power Commander. One more thing that I would like to mention is gearing is very important. Vortex sprockets are, in my opinion, the best sprockets in the industry. I personally use steel sprockets. Are you ro roll racing on the street or are you going quarter mile runs? For a quarter mile run, you're gonna be more geared towards having lower gearing so that you can leave off the line hard out of first gear. If you're more on the roll racing on the street category, you're gonna want taller gearing. And for those of you that don't know, when you go down in the front, that's for quick acceleration or go up in the back. Those are for quick acceleration. But when you want a higher top end, you would go down in the back and up in the front. So down in the front, up in the back for quick acceleration, up in the front, down in the back for more top end performance. One more thing I would say is an air shifter is probably gonna be the final touch on your build after you've done an exhaust, an air filter, velocity stacks, flash the ECU, got a piggyback tuner, uh, actually ran a dyno tune on your bike, you've stretched and lowered it, you've changed the gearing to your specific application. An air shifter, basically <laughs> you have an air tank and a compressor, an onboard compressor. So your onboard compressor fills the tank and goes to an air solenoid that is connected to an air cylinder that is connected to your shift lever. And you would use something, let's say, like you can use a Power Commander 5 to cut the motor for milliseconds <clears throat> and hit something like an activation, such as the horn button, and activate the air solenoid and cut the motor with the power commander but more than likely a lot of people use uh, the MPS kill box M MPS kill box uh, this is the kill box I'm going to use on the Gixxer 1000 these are some of the components that you would need for an air shifter uh, most kits don't really come complete it's really hard to find complete kits for specific bikes so typically uh, you can buy, you can normally buy a kit 
that consists of mostly what you need, but you might have to get specific components for how you want the air shifter to work. Uh, here, I have a DME shift lever. I have a MPS ignition coil harness so that I won't have to splice any wires because I am running an ignition timing module on the Gixxer 1000. Uh, this is a top mount. This is an MPS pressure sensor so that when my air tank gets down to 110 PSI, it'll automatically fill my tank up to 145 PSI. And this is just uh, one of the older MPS kill boxes. You can get different type of kill boxes like the auto blipper. They have auto blipper kill boxes to where basically after you launch your bike, it'll automatically kill at certain RPMs and shift for you instead of having to hit a button. Uh, we have the air compressor, the air cylinder, uh, just some OEM parts that I needed, air solenoid, this is a cut and welded OEM Gixxer 1000 kickstand so that I can lower it down more. Uh, I'm gonna definitely get my mechanic to lower it down some more. Double bubble windscreen so that I can get a little bit lower and be able to tuck a little bit better and hide away from the wind a lot more efficiently. So what now can you do to make that bike faster at this point. Now is the time for power adders. You still have a stock motor. You have a stock motor that's running as efficiently as it possibly can at this point. The cheapest and easiest power adder to add is nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide has more molecules of oxygen in it than ambient air. So when you spray, it's, it's just like forced induction, but through a pressurized bottle, so to speak. Just because you're running a 50 shot doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily translate into that power on a dyno graph. You might make more, you might make less. There's a lot of different ways to do nitrous. You can do a wet kit which is spraying nitrous and fuel at the same time, or you can do what most people do and is easier to install, which is a dry kit, where using such a, a, a device such as a power commander, you can add more fuel while you're just spraying nitrous. So what about forced induction turbo? A turbo, is gonna net you a good amount of horsepower and you're gonna have it basically all the time. All you have to do is th twist that throttle. The negative thing about nitrous oxide, it does run out. You should probably keep a lot of spare bottles on hand just in case you're at some type of event or you're racing in some type of fashion. The thing about a turbo is that it's forced induction. So when you hit a certain RPM, you're gonna start making boost. The turbine is gonna start spinning. And then when you hit a specific RPM past that, you're gonna be at max boost. On a stock motor, let's say for my Gixxer 1000. My Gixxer 1000 is a 2006 Gixxer 1000. On a, a, a base kit, I'd probably be making 220 horsepower to the wheel. On a stock motor, running, let's say four pounds of boost. And there's not too much I can do on a stock motor past that. There's certain things that I can engage in, maybe, you know, run the bike on methanol, run it completely on alcohol to, or race gas to have a, you know, cooling effect and have higher octane so that I can run higher ignition timing but I'm really not gonna be able to run it anywhere past 220 or 230 horsepower wheel. Now on a built motor, yeah, we can go past four pounds of boost. We can start going into, 
different ranges. It's going to depend on the specific pistons and rods. Typically, you know, the rods are normally Carrillo, but the piston combination, the, the compression ratio, what do we have to do to that stock motor to make it be able to run more nitrous oxide, to be able to run more boost through a turbo, pistons, rods. You might wanna lighten the crank or use a stroker crank. You might wanna do heavy duty valve springs, uh, titanium retainers, oversized intake and exhaust valves, porting and polishing your head cylinders. All of these different type of things that can make your motor bigger and make your motor flow air more efficiently. Head porting and oversized valves definitely increase the amount of flow that your head has as well as a camshaft. So on the top end, head porting, stronger retainers, stronger valves, stronger seats, valve seats, a different profile camshaft, actually using adjustable cam sprockets on that camshaft to make sure it's degreed properly for your application. And degreeing for what, for you guys that don't know is basically when you have a camshaft, and you use an adjustable sprockets. OEM camshafts typically do not have adjustable cam sprockets on it so that you can degree it in correlation to your crankshaft, what position you want your camshaft to be in in correlation to the position of your crankshaft. And it does make a difference. It does make a difference when you're using nitrous and what position the actual camshaft is in when you're spraying. Now with the, with the bottom end, the crankshaft, the pistons, the rods, you can do a stroker crank, but the bigger that you make a motor, the more heat it's going to trap. So that is an important fact to think about if you're going to be riding this bike on the street if you're, if you're stroking your motor out and using a, a, a stroker crank and doing a lot of crazy motor work, that's strictly a race bike. It's gonna get way too hot when you try to put it on the street. But the thing is, when you're using power adders, the motor doesn't necessarily have to be super duper big. It really has to do with the actual components that you're using that are gonna make the motor extremely strong so that it can take that 350 shot of nitrous that you're trying to push into it or it can take those 30 pounds of boost or those 20 pounds of boost that your turbo is spinning at. Also, actually lightening the bike and getting rid of all the unnecessary pieces that add up to weight. Uh, power to weight ratio is very important. A new 1000, a new Gixxer 1000, a new ZX10 can easily make what my ZX1200 makes and be lighter at the same time. So for instance, my ZX12, it doesn't have, it only has one front rotor. I could delete the, the rear brake. I can get rid of the, the passenger pegs. I'm, I'm actually gonna go sidewinder exhaust, so I'm not gonna need either one of the passenger pegs. There's little things, you can get a carbon fiber body kit different things that you can do to make subtle differences on the amount of weight. Like people don't know that the power to weight ratio has a lot to do with the outcome of a race. Like I said, newer 1000s can make the same power as my ZX-12 and be a hundred pounds lighter. You get what I'm saying? So. That's just something to be considerate of when you're racing that shedding every little piece of unnecessary weight is going to take off tenths to that quarter mile. Clutch setup and transmission. On most street bikes that are ridden on the street, it's going to probably be pretty good to do 
a Brox clutch mod, which basically eliminates the two piece back torque limiter in your clutch. Meaning that when you get a bike from the factory, typically it'll have a two piece back torque limiter. Meaning when you try to launch the bike, you'll the the bike will buck because it's in two pieces They'll they'll buck together and, and you won't be able to leave super hard it's basically a safety feature so that you don't leave super hard and flip your bike in a wheelie or do something stupid it's basically just a safety feature from the factory what a brox clutch mod does is it's a one piece it's a one piece instead of being a two-piece back torque limiter basically when it's in one piece, you can leave a lot harder and a lot more smoothly because it's in one piece. It's not gonna be jiggling around when you're trying to leave super hard like the factory OEM back torque limiter. On let's say a drag bike, a track oriented bike or a bike that you seriously ride in dig races, a, a lockup clutch or a slider clutch. Uh, a lockup clutch, is basically a clutch that uses pressure swing pe pressure springs that work off of your stall spring and your clutch so that when you're at the line let's say you're on a two-step you're on a two-step rev limiter you're going it has it has multiple different arms that lock up your clutch so that instead of letting your clutch out real slow, you can't really slip a lockup. When you let your clutch out, as the RPMs go up off of that two-step, you're going to, the clutch is gonna be locking up. It's not gonna slip. It has these arms that are gonna be uh, engaging in multiple different stages, uh, multi-stage lockup, such as MTC, MTC Engineering for their lockup clutches. Uh, multi-stage lockup so it's locking up so at the start you already hitting that two-step so it's already starting to lock up it's starting to add pressure to your clutch stack and push against it so once you're going and you let out that lockup clutch it's gonna lock the rest of the arms out so it's gonna hit instant torque to your back tire it's basically it's basically like a clutch on steroids, basically. When you leave, if you have a real sticky tire, you have good suspension set up to where you're gonna actually grip the road, you did a good burnout, your tire was warm, man, you're gonna squat down and just leave. It's gonna lock up the clutch. It's not gonna be like, when, when, you, when you use a OEM clutch, it, it's gonna apply pressure, but it's not gonna like lock like a lockup clutch. And it's not gonna be based on RPM. Basically, you know, you have your friction zone, either you're off the clutch, you're sorta in the clutch, and you're off the clutch. You can let the you can let it go as fast as you want, but how it's gonna engage power to the back tire isn't gonna be as dramatic on let's say an OEM clutch setup with a Brox clutch mod versus a lockup because in a lockup, the clutch is being assisted by these arms, basically putting all that pressure on the clutch and putting all that torque down to the back wheels. Um, I just wanted to give you guys my two my two cents and just go over you know a little bit of the stuff that I'm getting for my builds. Uh, this air shifter for my Jixer 1000, also getting it lowered down. I have a different kickstand, double bubble windscreen. Uh, that's for the most part, uh, the parts that I have for the Jixer. Now we're getting ready for some gas on the ZX-12, some big gas. <laughs> now I'm just kidding, but yeah, I do have a PFC four pound nitrous bottle, as well as a nitrous express bottle heater uh, just to keep the pressure up uh, pressure pressure uh, sensor right here um, getting ready you know piece of my piece of my uh, nitrous kit together um, piece of my nitrous kit together uh, I just recently ordered a progressive controller for the nitrous setup 
Um, I just really just need my spray bar and some lines basically and I'll have the the nitrous kit complete for the 12 as far as parts are concerned. Um, also, I have another, another compressor. I'm gonna use this compressor on the ZX-12 because I need a new compressor for my air shifter. Uh, that's about it, man. I'll keep you guys posted on it. I'm, I'm just, you know, collecting parts slowly. And uh, basically, I just wanted to do, to do this video because I saw, uh, you know, the fastest man in North America, the fastest man in the world, really, on a no bar bike. Uh, Chris Moore talking about how to make your bikes fast. And right now it's winter time, and I'm personally going through, you know, buying parts and trying to get ready for spring and summer, you know, trying to make my bikes as fast as possible. You know, not to say any names, but, you know, we got certain people saying that they're going to whoop me and this and this and this and this. But, you know, next year, um, that's what I'm trying to really get get prepared for, man, making a lot of good content for you guys, a lot of good racing content, uh, going out to different cities and, you know, seeing what their their sport bike scenes are like, having fun, man, and making good content for you guys, man. Uh, I want you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, tell me down below in the comments, uh, did you get any value from this video and your opinion on how to make your motorcycle faster? Or is there any things that I missed? I know there has to be plenty of things that I missed. You know, I want this to really be a community and I want you guys to really chime in and, you know, put your two cents in, man. I love learning from you guys. I hope I can be teaching you guys something of the, the things that I know and I want to be able to, you know, receive some knowledge from you guys. You know, a lot of you guys have been riding longer than me. Uh, I just want to hear your two cents, man. Just uh, put it down below in the comment bar uh, and I'm out. Peace.